Good evening and thank you so much for joining us on our first virtual tour of St Peter's. And underpinning our community are three very clear pillars that we want to have teaching and learning that is dynamic, that is challenging and that is authentic. Secondly, we want pastoral care that is nurturing, that is supportive, that helps develop the whole child. And then we want to ensure that those individual gifts and talents that each student has are given opportunities to flourish so that they can take those out into the world with them when they leave here and venture into their adult lives. Because teaching and learning needs to have some foundation, we have some core subjects that our seven, eights and nines do. So all of our year seven, eights and nines have English, they do mathematics, science, history and geography, technology, health and physical education, Christian studies, and then music and art and drama. And this gives them a well-rounded basis to start to explore talents that they might know that they've had. And it gives them a taste of what's available to them later in school. We then look at what we can do in junior high to integrate some of those subjects so that we're going across the disciplines and they're not just learning in silos. With our new junior high precinct, we have the facilities to be able to do more of that integrated learning where students are starting to problem solve, starting to be creative in the way they tackle a question and be collaborative, working together in small groups. In year 10, we have again those core subjects that are so foundational to academic learning. So all our students do English, maths, they do a semester of history and a semester of geography. They do science and they do Christian studies and HPE. But then on top of that, now they get to start making some choices. Those things that they had, subjects that they had tasters of in years seven, eight and nine, they can now say, hey, yes, I really love drama or technology. Digital technology was really fascinating. Can I please do some more of that? So in year 10, they choose three electives for semester one and three electives for semester two. And that allows them to explore things, that, subjects that interest them in a little more depth and also to lay some foundations for the subjects that they may wish to do in years 11 and 12. In years 11 and 12, we offer QCAA general subjects. General subjects are the subjects that students need to do to be eligible for an ATAR, for an Australian Tertiary Admission Ranking. We have a wide range of subjects in 11 and 12, ranging from core subjects of English, we offer maths methods and general maths. We offer specialist maths for those students that are real maths nerds and love their maths. The other subjects that you would expect to find in an academic school, physics, legal studies, chemistry, biology, but we've also introduced some new subjects that have become available to us. So now our students can also have the option of studying psychology, digital solutions, or studying engineering. And with our year 11 subjects, we don't have a set list of subjects. If we've got a teacher who can teach the subject, then when the year 10s do their subject selection for year 11, we put all those subjects out there to see what interest there is amongst students. We then devise the senior program in response to what our students want. Coming back to that notion of being a student-centered school. In year 11 and 12, we again, create a timetable that tries to allow as many students as possible to do the subjects that they wish to do. If a student wants to do a subject that we don't offer, facilitate them to be able to do that through Brisbane School of Distance Education, if it's offered through BSDE, and then they're allowed to drop a school-based subject to pick up a distance ed subject. We also offer traineeships and partnerships, which I'm sure Sarah will talk to you more about, and also students can enter into university courses and do a subject through university and programs that they have available for secondary students. So many, many pathways for our year 11 and 12 students. But of course, it doesn't matter how great the academic offerings are if students aren't supported pastorally. I always come from the position that if a student is nervous about coming into class, is worried about what's going to happen, is feeling upset about something, then they're not going to learn. 
So if we've got those pastoral aspects right, if the student is feeling happy, they're feeling secure, they're feeling comfortable, they're feeling that they can deal with life, then they're going to learn. So we again have a number of deliberate initiatives to look after our student well-being. We have pastoral care teachers and the pastoral care teachers are responsible for the day-to-day -day pastoral care of the students in their class. Then we have in junior high a key pastoral care teacher. Catherine Bowes does a fantastic job just looking out for all of those young adolescent learners. Sarah Johnson, our counsellor, is always available to talk to students, work with students. Pastor Matt Wilkes does a lot of work caring for our students, talking to them, working with them, and again, is always happy to, to have a chat to a student who's feeling pressured or alone or, or whatever it might be that, that's a hiccup in their lives at that time. I work with an open door policy. The students know that my door is open to them at any time, and this is part of how our community community works together and so we are able to have this very very caring supportive pastoral care climate amongst our students and I think the fact that we very much live out our values of care dignity and respect they're very much integrated into everything that we do and opportunities for our students is the third pillar that sits in underneath everything that we do. We have students who, of course, are really great at sport of some sort. We have students who the performing arts is their passion. We have students who have a heart for service. They want to do things for other people. They, they're always looking for those opportunities. So we offer very deliberately a wide, wide range um, of opportunities for students to be able to live out their passions, develop their skills. We're very fortunate with our sport that because we're part of the wider, bigger St Peter's community, our students can participate in the St Peter's teams along with their intrapilly counterparts. Our musos get to participate with band camps and master classes with the musos from St Peter's at Indrapilly. Lots of opportunities in both the performing arts and in the sporting field. We have students who are very keen on serving the world in which they live. We have students who will drive projects such as putting together care packages for our soldiers at Anzac, around Anzac Day. We have other opportunities, of course, for leadership, both in junior high and senior school. We encourage students to become leaders. Part of our pastoral care community, Life2 is a wellbeing committee that's made up of our students and they will do things like run breakfast clubs. At our school, secondary school assemblies, we have a segment that's called Celebrating Accomplishment. And in that segment, we will celebrate all sorts of accomplishment and achievement by our students. And because we want to encourage students not just to be the best in the class, we want students to be doing the best work they can. For Year 7s, we have the Year 7 camp very early in the year and this is when our new Year 7 students and our continuing St Peter students all get together, get mixed up completely and all get to know each other. Um, and that happens in the first few weeks of Term 1, Year 7. Our Year 8s have their Year 8 production where we take them totally out of their comfort zone and we make them go on stage Year 8s. They have to write the, the lyrics to the song that they are going to sing. They have to learn their dance movements. They need to make their props. And then we have on the Friday night of week one, the grand production where our year eights perform their plays for family, friends and the school community. And some of them who've said at the start, I can't do this, I won't do this. And they get up there on the night and do it. And they are so proud of what they've achieved. Year nines, of course, have wonderful Ironbark experience. The five weeks living and working at Ironbark, those students come back just buzzing with the whole wonderful, wonderful Ironbark experience. That is the memory that they take with them forever. In year 10, we welcome our students from junior high into senior school. And in term one, 
we have the Year 10 dinner, where our Year 10s are presented with their senior ties, and this is their formal recognition that you are now a senior student at St Peter's. Year 11s select how they want to celebrate their Year 11 year. Year 12s, of course, have their formal, that very important rite of passage, and then our valedictory, which is the final day for our Year 12s at school. And that event culminates when they come through a guard of honour made up of every student at St Peter's from prep through to year 11. Really important milestones that are built into the traditions and the culture of who we are at St Peter's. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been a pleasure being able to share a little bit about who we are and what we do here and why we do it. I hope that this is just the first step in a journey that we can take together over the coming years. Thank you so much for your time this evening and may God bless you.